Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the box trace by channel node? Let's run our quick little example. What we're seeing here is our sphere is projecting out a box trace using the visibility channel, and it's colliding with this little blueprint sphere, sphere cube that I've created here. Now, by default, if you don't really do anything with the settings, it's going to work pretty much just like a line trace. So we're going to cover the differences between the line trace and the box trace node. Let's get right into it. Let's open up my, let's get rid of this cube, which is hanging out for no reason. Let's go ahead and open up my box trace by channel. And we'll take a look at it. Now by default, it's going to be pretty similar. Let's pull up our line trace. And we'll find it's going to be pretty similar. Pretty much the only difference is going to be this half size and orientation. That's going to be the only real differences. But they make a big difference, so let's check them out. So we have a starting point and an ending point. For my example, the starting point is going to be the sphere, and the ending point is just going to be a distance off that direction of a thousand units. Now when we hit play, we see it fires off and it collides. Because the default values of half size and orientation are set to zero, it's going to work just like a line trace. We need to actually adjust these values. So the half size basically refers to this half size of the box. You start in the middle, which is going to be our starting point basically. And then we're going to go out on the X, whatever values I put in here. So if I put in 10, let's, let's start over with, there we go, 10, 10, and 10, and I hit play, we're going to get a box 20 units for the size, 10 in each direction, 10, 10 to the left of the start point, 10 to the right of the start point, 10 up, 10 down, 10 forward, 10 backwards. And we now have a 10 by 10 box that's firing off. Now let's increase this up to 60 so we can actually see how it works properly. Well, how one of the ways it works. And you'll see this starting box here around my cube is my starting collision volume. It's going to project forward because that's where my end point is, and it's going to go to the end, and it's going to be the cube the entire time. Basically, it's going to continue forward, and anything within that cube is going to, for in this case, become our hit. So if you look here, you'll see this green cube, and you'll see a red square. Let me move through here quickly. The red square indicates basically where we're hitting the actual impact point. And the green cube is indicating our box volume, the extents of the volume, what our volume was when we hit. So we fired forward from here. It went forward. It got to this point. The end of it, the edge, hit the edge of our sphere. We have our impact point, And then we have the actual collision volume that you can see here that was used to find our impact point. Now you'll notice... The reason it hit that one is because it's basically the first point as we fired forward, as we swept basically, that ended up being a collision. If we made it larger, let's say 100, 100, 100, even though we're now bigger than the entire thing, the edge of our box is still hitting the edge there, and that's why we're colliding. Now if I walk through, we're going to see something funny happen. When I walk through, I have a little nose basically on the front of my player and the height of that nose is this little square you see on the back that's hitting it's inside of our collision volume as we walk into it like this and it's becoming our impact point point. and actually if we go back to here because this is already inside of our volume when we created it we did our sweep basically we are triggering on my nose yet again right from the start we're not actually even going anywhere we just boom I'm already here and it's triggering so that second part's kind of something that's important let's say you didn't want an endpoint let's say you wanted to just check everything that's inside the box around where you are well you would think you would do the start and the endpoint being the same let's set it up to 100 again and we won't mess with orientation yet we'll hit play 
Now, if I walk into it, well, we're going to have an issue. Even though the box look like it's, looks like it's rendering right, it isn't because traces are sweeps. They need a start and an ending point, even if you're using something like a box or a sphere. Now, that's really easy to get around. We take our start point, and we will add a very small value to our Z, and use that as our end point. Now what's going to happen is it's going to do a very small sweep in our Z direction. And it's going to, of course, anything inside of it is going to fire off. I'm doing this every tick. So every tick, it's basically doing a very tiny sweep for this box, checking to see if anything collides, and then returning the results. And of course, as my nose collides, it's returning a valid result. Now the usefulness for this is, let's say we did 400. And we ran this again. Well, of course, it's going to return something because we have the floor. If I was to take my floor and I've actually hidden something underneath it, we have a bunch of cubes down here. If we hit play, you'll notice it is hitting one of the cubes inside of here. Now, this is one of those things that I was trying to figure out and I really could not get a really stable result from I've hooked up my hit result to print out what we're hitting and let's hit play and we'll notice it's hitting cube 4 if we go to our map and we find cube 4 and zoom in on it we're going to find it's this bottom cube it's basically our bottom cube here in the middle we hit play and we'll find that right here that I'm looking at is cube 4 my best guess is when it does this overlapping sweep, it's going to return back the f last result inside the volume. If I was to, for example, let's see, that is our x-axis. If I was to reduce the x-axis to something like 50 and hit play, we now find cube 2 as our result. Here's cube 4 in front of me. It's no longer in our bounds. It's telling me cube 2 is our returned value. If we find cube 2, we're going to find it's going to be this bottom one here. And when we run it, it's basically going to be the farthest one inside of our volume as a returned value. If we take this one, cube itself, let's move cube way down here and hit play. You'll notice cube now returns as the valid result because it is the farthest value in terms of this sweep that we're doing. That is something to keep in mind. However, if you're going to be doing something like this where you want to see the results inside the volume, you're more than likely going to want to use the multi version and get back everything and then do something with all the return results. All the other options on here are going to be the same for our normal traces. We have our visibility channel, which channel it fires off against, trace complex, whether or not we're going to use a simple or complex collision. For the most part, you can leave this off unless you have something that's very unique, maybe a set of hands, and you don't want to use a box collision. You actually want to fire off against the fingers themselves and not the emptiness between them. Actors to ignore is an array of actors you may wish to ignore. Maybe we want to fire off and only hit enemies and not players, but they have the same parent type. So we might want to set it to ignore the player actor type. Debug frame, of course, is what we've been using in order to see our cube. Without the debug frame, you can't see anything. And then ignore self basically tells it to ignore itself, this blueprint that we're inside of. If not, the sphere, because it has a collision preset, would trigger upon itself because it's visible in this case. That is going to, oh, sorry. And I forgot the orientation node, of course. Let's go ahead and plug this back into here. Let's go ahead and set our half size to something more appropriate like 30 all the way around. And let's go ahead and put our floor back in so we don't fall through again. There we go, and let's hit play. And we're gonna see our little cube here. Our cube is being projected from our starting point to our end point with flat 
for the orientation. Zero, 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 because that's our rotation. If you wanted to, for whatever reason, rotate any of your axes, you can, and you'll notice we have our box rotated on the X by 45 degrees. I could, of course, change this to something like 45 on the Y, and we'll see a Y rotation. And that's useful if you need to fit a specific shape or you want to do something different. If you need it, that is what our orientation is for. That is going to go ahead and wrap up the video on the box trace by channel node.